Theopatra, More Than Just a Mouse, by Candace Hartzler, illustrated by Amanda Ingerson. Theopatra Holyoke lived with her mama in a tiny house tucked beneath a rotting wooden pallet near the base of a tall oak tree. She and her mama kept things neat and tidy. They ate on a small table covered with a blue and white checkered cloth and there was a bathroom with a sink for washing their paws. Theopatra had her own bedroom, and her little bed lay beneath the window. Each night, she would cup her mouse face in her paws, lean into the window, and watch the white stars sprinkle themselves across the black sky. Hmm, she whispered to herself, how do those stars know how to dance and sparkle in the sky? Theopatra was a curious, smart, and very, very busy little mouse, even though her mama often told her how proud she was of her. She sometimes claimed that Theopatra was too rambunctious. You are too rambunctious, her mama would say, when Theopatra ran around asking her about everything. I don't know what that word means, mama. It means you are too busy and ask too many questions. It means I don't have that many answers, my dear little daughter. Her mama could read only a few words, but she did know something about the alphabet, and she taught Theopatra about the lines, dots, and circles that make up the letters. You will need more words than I have in my mouse brain, said her mama, pointing to her forehead. You must learn to find your own answers to your many questions. Each morning, her mama would bring out a small chalkboard. This is what the letter A looks like. And she would point to the letter she had copied from a small book she once found on the ground near a patch of daisies. And this is the letter B. At first, all the lines and circles and dots look like gibberish to Theopatra. I would rather watch the stars dance and sparkle or run around the base of our tree or play hide and seek in the tall grass or stand on my tiptoes. I don't want to learn about circles and lines. But her mama insisted, you will be a grown up mouse soon and you will be living in your own house. All these circles and lines make words and words are what will teach you about all the things I do not know. So Theopatra learned the meanings of words. She tried hard not to be so rambunctious. But each day after her lesson, she skedaddled out of the house to run around the mouse tree. As she learned, her mind felt chock full of words and thoughts and ideas about clouds and sky, trees and frogs and ballerinas, about unicorns and moths and skyscrapers and eyeglasses and marshmallows tomatoes and potatoes and picture books, about raindrops and the moon that sat so high over the treetops. And some days her head felt so full of thoughts she could barely sit still. She would scurry to her little bedroom and because she could not be still, she would twirl and then she would try to stand on her skinny toes. And when she twirled on her toes, her mouse heart and her bedroom felt full of color and lights. One afternoon, Theopatra sat beside her mama at the table, nibbling on cheese and apple bits while tapping her toes on the floor. Theopatra made a declaration. I've decided to be a ballerina when I grow up. Her mama spit out a sliver of cheese and her voice sounded like a small rumble of thunder, the way it always did when she was not pleased. Mice don't dance, my little rambunctious, dreamy-eyed daughter. They skedaddle along the edges of baseboards of trunks of trees. But Mama, Theopatra cried, I don't want to just skedaddle. I want to dance and maybe even live in a skyscraper. And I know I can twirl and stand on my toes because I've practiced. I know I can. Her Mama's voice softened. She put her paw on Theopatra's back. Mice are just mice, dear. They don't dance. Have you ever seen me dance? Your body is furry and round and is not made for dance. You are tubby and chubby like all other mice, and your legs are thin as toothpicks. She patted the top of Theopatra's head. 
Maybe you've been learning too many words and dreaming about things you can't have. You are still so rambunctious. Theopatra pulled in her lip, stood up straight as a line in the letter T, and crossed her thin arms across her chest. Her mom smiled and tried to shuffle, tried to muffle her chuckle as she watched Theopatra place her paws under her armpits. Dear little daughter mouse, it would take a whole lot of magic for you to be anything other than the wonderful mouse you already are. But what if I already have that magic inside me? What then, Mama? Theopatra's large ears hurt, and so did her heart from the sting of her mama's words and chuckles. She uncrossed her arms and skedaddled as fast as she could out of the door and along the edge of the path that led from the oak tree to the mountain tall pine tree. She sat on the soft pine needles and looked up at the sun riding high in the sky, and she thought about things. What if mama's words are wrong, she said to the pine needles. What if I already have magic inside me? What if I want to become more than just the mouse? I already am. She picked up a small twig lying beside her and drew a dancing mouse in the bed of soft pine needles. Chapter 2 Soon it was time for Theopatra to move into her own mouse house. She waved goodbye to her mama, who had a small tear spilling from her right eye. Theopatra moved her bed, table, and bookshelves to a small house located beneath a sink at the You Can Library, a pink stone building on the corner of Wood and Best Streets. After she had tidied up her little house, she went exploring. To the left of the entrance to her house was a baseboard and she skedaddled along its edge. After a while, she found herself in a room larger than she had ever seen, and in front of her mountains of bookshelves, millions of words on the pages of hundreds of books. She stood on the tips of her toes and twirled like a leaf in the wind. All these words, all these books, what is a mouse to do, she exclaimed, but read and twirl on my toes as I dance. Each evening after dinner, Theopatra scurried along the baseboard into the very large room in the library. She stared up at the covers of all the books, and on the fourth night she scrambled up to one of the shelves. She pulled out the book with the word dance in the title. Sitting on the edge of the shelf, she read all the words while holding her tiny flashlight. The books showed her how to keep her toes facing outward and her heels together in first position. She saw pictures of tutus and ballet slippers. Other books told her how other mice lived. There was a mouse named Minnie who belonged to a club and a mouse named Lily who carried a plastic purse to school. There was a mouse who lived in the country and one who lived in the city. There was a mouse who painted pictures, went to school, and even made friends with a snake. She wondered if any of those mice ever dreamed of becoming something other than the mice they already were. After skedaddling back to her own mouse house, she sat on her bed and thought about all the things she had read. The whole world was so full of magic. Why couldn't that magic already be inside her? While thinking of all the mice and the pictures and the words, she decided to practice being the kind of mouse she wanted to become. She practiced standing on her skinny toes and twirling as fast as she could, and she did not get dizzy. She put her heels together and her toes facing outward. She found a long string and chewed it to make it short. She searched her tiny mouse closet until she found the piece of pink handkerchief she had discovered one night along the baseboard of the library. She chewed it into the shape of a circle and tied the circle around her chubby, full of magic tummy with the string. It was her very own tutu. She wore it every day and even made a pair of soft ballet slippers out of what was left of the handkerchief. 
then twirling on her tippy toes with her thin arms above her head, made her feel like some magic was swirling inside her mouse heart, turning her into a mouse who could find her own answers like her mama wanted. She felt not bashful, but brave. She grew tired of skedaddling along baseboards. She wanted to dance beneath the trees and explore more of the world outside her tiny, soft, and cozy mouse house. The next morning, she stood next to her bed with her paws on her plump little hips. I need to quit skedaddling like I'm some kind of scared little mouse. I'll never find out if I'm too rambunctious if I just stand here. And she said it not in a whisper, but in a shout. So off she went in her pink tutu and ballet slippers made by her very own paws. She walked upright along the baseboard until she found a small hole three feet from the one she used to enter the library. She sniffed and could smell the outdoors. Her fluffy tutu made it a very tight squeeze, but she made it through the hole with only a few huffs and puffs and a tiny smudge on her slippers. Here I am, she called out to the trees and the sky and the stars, waiting to be born again that night. She walked on her toes so the bottoms of her slippers would not get dirty, and she walked until she reached a very tall blue-green spruce tree. And there she found a flat square rock beneath the tree's low branches and decided it was the perfect place to practice her ballet positions. Magic takes a lot of practice, she exclaimed. This will be my practice rock. Every day I will dance until I become a real ballerina. She remembered the ballet position she had read about in the dance book, and she began her practice session first by visualizing the pictures of each position, and she practiced until she saw the stars first appear. Chapter 3 each day, Theopatra went to her rock beneath the blue-green spruce tree. She danced and twirled and practiced her ballet positions. First position, she said. She stood with her heels together and her paws in front of her tutu in the shape of a circle, as if she were holding the world in front of her, just like the book had said. The sun was shining, warming both the air and the rock. Second position, she said. She stood with her heels some inches apart while holding out her arms like soft airplane wings. She practiced until her legs, arms, and feet hurt and sweat dripped down her furry forehead. Practicing being my own magical self can wear me out, she said aloud. She took off her ballet slippers to rest her toes in the patches of green moss that grew on top of the small damp rocks a few feet from her practice rock. and She sank her feet into the soft patches of green and sighed. While resting with her feet sunk ankle deep, she heard a soft thud. The sound came from the base of the oak tree that grew tall as a mountain next to the spruce tree, about 10 feet from her practice rock. She knew something had hit the ground and she grew curious. Hello, she called, is someone there? When there was no answer, she unsank her feet and left her rock to investigate the sound she had heard. There, in the middle of a soft mound of grass beneath the tree, sat a very small owl, a young-looking owl, almost a baby but not quite. It had a heart-shaped face and small, black-as-coal eyes. Hey, Theopatra said, what are you doing here? The owl turned its head almost all the way around to look at her. What do you think I'm doing here? Same thing you're doing here, said the owl, sitting. How do you turn your head all the way around like that, Theopatra asked in wonder. I just turn it the way I turn it. I'm made that way. I didn't know necks could do that. The owl scowled. I didn't know a mouse could wear a pink skirt, so we're even. But I'm not worried about necks or skirts right now. I'm hungry. What are you doing on the ground then? asked Theopatra. I fell. Why don't you fly away? Owls are supposed to fly, aren't they? The owl stared out of those dark little eyes circled with fuzzy feathers. I said I'm hungry. Why did you fall? And where is your mother? And why does your face look like that? And do your eyes ever blink? 
Cleopatra asked all these questions while she walked slowly around the owl. And are you a boy owl or a girl owl? The little owl just kept staring straight ahead. Theopatra picked up a small twig and poked the owl in the side. Stop poking me, he cried. If you talk to me, I'll stop poking. The owl's head turned all the way around again, and he looked straight at Theopatra. If it's any of your business, I'm a boy owl. My name is Harless, and I fell. Oh, said Theopatra, hello. I'm a mouse who dances, and my name is Theopatra. Why are you so cranky? I fell from the nest up in that tree, from way up there, said Harless. He pointed his right wing toward a high up place in the tree. My mama said it was time for me to fly, but I fell. I didn't even try to use my wings. I just fell. He put his right wing over his face. I should have tried harder, but I was scared. Theopatra put her twig down. Do you need more practice, she asked. How were you supposed to know how to fly if you've never flown before? My mama told me how, but then she left and she never came back to help me practice. So I leaned too far out over our hole in the tree and I fell. I leaned out because I was hungry. Mama left two days ago. You don't know how to eat either? Well, mama fed me bunches of times a day when I was in the nest. How am I supposed to know how to feed myself if I've never had to? Theopatra stared at Harless. Oh, she said. Wow. I'm very, very, very hungry. What do you do when you're hungry and haven't eaten in two whole days, said Harless. His eyes that were dark as the night sky looked straight at Theopatra. Theopatra changed the subject. Where are your ears? I don't see your ears. How do you hear anything if you don't have ears? Harless sighed. My ears are inside these feathers, he said and patted both sides of his head with his wings. Just because you can't see them doesn't mean they are missing. And don't stand there and talk to me about ears when your ears are big as the little plates my mama used to serve my mouse scraps on. That stopped Theopatra's questions cold. Her brain remembered something scary from all the things she had read about owls in the You Can Library. Owls eat mice. Lots of them. And she was a mouse, a ballerina mouse, but a mouse. But what if I am just a mouse, she thought. Oh, my. But, but, but she stammered, that isn't the only thing you eat. You can eat other things, right? Like frogs or beetles, moths, crickets, even spiders. I don't know how to find any of those, said Harless. Theopatra sat down in the soft grass several feet from Harless. She felt very stubborn and a little bit afraid. Let's put our heads together, she said. We need to think about how to get you some food. And no, you can't eat me, she said, holding up one of her paws. So don't even think about it. I have too much magic inside, and eating me would make you very, very, very sick. Harla stared at her. I don't want to get sick, but I am very, very, very hungry, he said. Hmm, she thought, I'd better think even faster than I scurry. Seems like I have a lot of convincing to do, or he'll chomp me into little bony pieces. <laughs>